Aruvin 61A, and the residents of a small city may not walk through an entire large city. What is the reason for this difference? Is it not because these, the residents of the small city, their measure of 2,000 cubits terminated in the middle of the large city, and therefore they may walk only to the end of their 2,000 cubits? And these, the residents of the large city, their measure of 2,000 cubits terminated at the far end of the small city, allowing them to walk through the entire city as though it were four cubits and complete the 2,000 cubit measure of their Shabbat limit on the other side of the city. And Rabbi Idi, who said that Rabbi Yahashua ben Levi's statement has no source, may hold that the Mishnah teaches the two cases with the same formulation. Just as it states, the residents of a large city may walk through an entire small city. It similarly states, the residents of a small city may walk through an entire large city. His version of the Mishnah did not state that the residents of a small city may not walk through an entire large city. And he establishes the Mishnah as referring to one who placed his Eruv inside the other city. Consequently, that city becomes his Shabbat residence, and he may walk anywhere in that city and an additional 2,000 cubits be beyond it. But we did not learn anything about one who was measuring 2,000 cubits from his Shabbat residence outside the city, in which case it makes a difference whether the entire city is within his 2,000 cubits or whether only part of it is within this limit. The Gemara asks, And did we not learn in the Mishnah about one who was measuring? Didn't we learn in the Mishnah, and as for one who is measuring his Shabbat limit, with regard to whom the sages said that one gives him 2,000 cubits, that applies even if the end of his measurement terminates in the middle of a cave. Although a cave has the status of a private domain, he may enter only the part of the cave that is within his 2,000 cubits. This case is directly parallel to the case of one whose 2,000 cubits end in the middle of a city. The Gemara answers, Although there is a source for the case of one whose limit ends in the middle of a city, it was nevertheless necessary for Rabbi Yahashua ben Levi to teach the case where one's measure ends at the far end of the city, in which case the entire city is regarded as four cubits and the rest of the Shabbat limit is completed on the other side of the city, as we did not learn anything about such a case. With regard to the Mishnah cited above, Rav Naaman said, one who teaches the following in the second clause, the residents of a small city may walk through an entire large city, does not err in his rendering of the Mishnah, and one who teaches, the residents of a small city may not walk through an entire large city, also does not err. Both renderings are plausible. Rav Naaman explains, One who teaches the residents of a small city may walk through an entire large city does not err, as he establishes the Mishnah as referring to one who places his Eruv inside the other city, and one who teaches the residents of a small city may not walk through an entire large city also does not err as he establishes the Mishnah as referring to one who measures his Shabbat limit and arrives at the city from the outside. And the Mishnah is incomplete, and it teaches the following. 
The residents of a large city may walk through an entire small city, but the residents of a small city may not walk through an entire large city. In what case is this statement said? It was said with regard to one who was measuring his 2,000 cubits from his Shabbat residence. But one who was in the large city and placed his Eruv in the small city. And similarly, one who was in the small city and placed his Eruv in the large city, he may walk through the entire city in which he placed his Eruv and beyond it 2,000 cubits. Rav Yosef said that Rami Bar Abba said that Rav Huna said, With regard to a city located on the edge of a ravine, if there is a barrier four cubits high in front of it, one measures its Shabbat limit from the edge of the ravine as it is considered the border of the city. And if there is not a barrier four cubits high in front of it, the Shabbat limit is measured from the entrance of each person's house, as the city is not considered a permanent settlement. Abay said to him, You told us with regard to this case that a barrier four cubits high is required. What is different about this case that it requires a barrier that is higher than all other barriers, which must reach a height of only four handbreadths? He said to him, There, use of the place is not frightening. Here, Use of the place is frightening. Generally, partitions serve a symbolic function, and therefore it is sufficient for the partition to be four handbreadths high. In this case, however, it is frightening to stand along the edge of the ravine without a protective barrier, and therefore a barrier four cubits high must be constructed for the safety of the residents. Rav Yosef said, From where do I derive to say that to say this halakha? As it was taught in a bereta, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi permitted the residents of Geder, situated at the top of a slope, to descend on Shabbat to Hamtan, situated at the bottom of the slope. But the residents of Hamtan may not ascend to Geder. What is the reason? It is not because these, the inhabitants of Geder, constructed a barrier at the lower edge of their city, and these, the members of Hamtan, did not construct a barrier at the upper edge of their city. Consequently, the residents of Geder measured their Shabbat limit from their barrier, and Hamtan was included in their 2,000 cubits. The residents of Hamtan had to measure their Shabbat limits from their homes, and therefore Geder was not within their 2,000 cubit limit. The Gemara relates that when Rab Dimi came from Eretz Yisrael to Babylonia, he said, This ruling was issued not due to their respective Shabbat limits, but rather because the residents of Geder would assault. Metatrag, the residents of Hamtan. And what does it mean that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi permitted the residents of Geder to descend to Hamtan, but not vice versa? He instituted this. In other words, this was not halakhic ruling, but rather an ordinance instituted to protect the public welfare and prevent fighting. The Gemara asks, What is different about Shabbat that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi instituted this ordinance only for Shabbat and not for the rest of the week? The Gemara answers, Drunkenness is common on Shabbat when people eat to their heart's content. Therefore, there is a greater chance of violent behavior. The Gemara asks, When the residents of Geder go to Hamtan, they will assault the residents there. Of what use, then, is this ordinance? The Gemara answers, citing a popular saying, 
A dog that is not in its place will not bark for seven years. On its own turf, a dog barks readily, but it becomes scared in unfamiliar surroundings and remains silent. Similarly, the people of Gader are not nearly as bold when they visit Hamtan as they are in their own town. The Gemara asks, If so, we should be concerned about the reverse scenario, that now too the residents of Hamtan in their home territory will take revenge and assault the residents of Gader. The Gemara answers, the people of Gader would not be submissive to such an extent. While visiting Hamtan, they would not initiate fights, but they would certainly fight back if they were attacked. Consequently, the people of Hamtan would not dare initiate hosti hostilities with them. Therefore, there is no concern about the safety of either group. Rav Safra said, Gader was a city shaped like a bow whose two ends were separated by less than 4,000 cubits. The empty space of the bow was viewed as though it were filled with houses, and its Shabbat limit was measured from the imaginary bowstring stretched between the two ends of the bow. Consequently, Hamtan was included in its Shabbat limit, and the residents of Gader were permitted to go there on Shabbat. With regard to the inhabitants of Hamtan, however, that same area between the ends of Gader was viewed as empty space, and therefore the houses of Gader along the arc of the bow were beyond their Shabbat limit. Rav Dimi Bar Hinana said, The people of Gader were residents of a large city and the people of Hamtan were residents of a small city. Consequently, the residents of the large city, Gader, could walk through all of Hamtan, the small city, but the residents of Hamtan could walk only through part of Gader, as explained previously. Rav Kahana taught it that way, as stated previously, whereas Rav Tavyomi taught it more concisely. In this way, Rav Safra and Rav Dimi Bar Hinana disagreed about the matter. One of them said, Gader was a city shaped like a bow, and one of them said, The people of Hamtan were residents of a small city, and the people of Gader were residents of a large city. Mishnah the residents of a large city may walk through an entire small city, and the residents of a small city may walk through an entire large city, even if part of it is located more than 2,000 cubits from their city. How so? One who was in a large city and placed his Eruv in a small city, or one who was in a small city and placed his Eruv in a large city, may walk through the entire city in which he placed his Eruv and another 2,000 cubits beyond it, as the entire city is considered as though it were only four cubits. Rabbi Akiva says he is only 2,000 cubits from the place of his Eruv, as the actual area of the city is included in the calculation. Rabbi Akiva said to the rabbis, Do you not concede to me that one who places his Eruv in a cave has only 2,000 cubits from the place of his Eruv, and that consequently the entire cave is not considered as merely four cubits? The rabbis said to him, the rabbis said to him, When does this apply? When the cave has no residence? But if it has residence, it is considered as though it were only four cubits, and one may walk through all of it and another 2,000 cubits beyond it. Consequently, the halakha with regard to an iruv placed inside a cave 
is sometimes more lenient than the halakha governing an eruv placed in the area above the cave. If one places his eruv inside a cave that has residence, he has 2,000 cubits beyond the cave. If he places it above the cave, where there are no residents, he is only 2,000 cubits from the place of his eruv. As for the one who is measuring his Shabbat limit, with regard to whom the sages said that one gives him 2,000 cubits, that measurement applies even if the end of his measurement terminates in the middle of a cave. He may not walk further into the cave even if the cave is inhabited.